Well, I just got the Blue Eddy AC-180 installed. Uh, these just came out about a week ago. It's brand new. And what's special about this, it has a, a small form factor. And I got this installed in my camper now. The camper is a little dirty right now. We're stripping the bed and we're washing those blankets. But anyway, to get back to this power bank, um, what's special about this is it has an 1800 watt output. It's pretty awesome, the fact that this can pump out 1800 watts. And you can put this in the power lifting mode, which will go up to 2700 watts, I believe. But you only want to put it in power lifting mode if you're using stuff like you know something that has a heating element maybe like a portable heater and that's about it you really don't want to even use power lifting mode with things such as a coffee maker um or especially electronics like you know a tv or an ac a unit which i'm going to go over all that here in a little bit um but this has the lithium iron phosphate battery in it, it will take 3500 charges to 80 percent what does that mean you could literally run this every day, 300, you know, 3,500 3, charges every day divided by 365. You're talking damn near 10 years and you'll still have 85% of its functionality left over, which is pretty amazing. Um, and the reason why I got this is number one, during the month of June when this came out, initially they're running this on sale for $7.99. I'm not totally sure what they're running this at now. But there was numerous promo codes out there that even had 20 bucks off. So I was able to get this for $7.99 minus 20. So $7.79, which is pretty freaking awesome for what you get. And this will pump out 1,800 total watts. will do anything that you want it to do, such as a coffee maker, a toaster, you name it. It will run most kitchen appliances. And this has a capacity of 1,152 watt hours. Now, it won't fully do that much. And let me just bring up my calculator here. And usually these are rated about 89%. I've seen a couple forums talking about this. If it's 1152, in all reality, if I times that by 0.89, it will do about a thousand twenty five watt hours now what does that mean well for pure example i know that this coffee maker which i'm going to show you here in a little bit takes up roughly 1400 watts if i take that 1025 and divide it by 1400 it will run that coffee maker for roughly three quarters of an hour that's a heck of a lot of coffee i know this toaster which takes roughly about 650 watts which i can show that here also uh, if it's 11.52, and you get this in focus, and about, times that by 0.89, because it's 89% efficient, it's truly going to do about 1,025 watt hours. And if this takes uh, roughly 650 watts, which I'm going to show here in a little bit, it will run that toast for 1.57 hours. So. That's just how it works. It's pretty simple. 1025, if it takes 100 watts, it will run it for 10.25 hours. So it's really that simple. Now, if you watch my videos in, in the past, I also have the EB3A. Right now, and I've kind of planned on this, right now I'm using this to run the DC lighting only. So just these DC lights here, uh, all through the camper, it's pulling 21 watts. Well, this Blue Eddy, the EB3A is very small and this does 268 watt hours. So if it's 268, it's roughly about 89% efficient. Um, it's truly gonna do about 240 watt hours. And my lights, the DC lights are pulling 21 watts i divide that by 21 and it will run these lights for 11.42 hours which is pretty phenomenal and that's with the lights on full bore i can actually dim down all my lights to say halfway and that's pretty typical at night you know it's only pulling eight eight watts so 250 divided by eight it will run 
at half on my lighting at 31 hours. So I know a lot of people have that question and that's how it works. Now, I got all this hardwired in and the way I have this set up is I'm running this big power bank, the AC 180 for AC only, and I'm using the smaller one for DC only. And I like to keep this so I can see it. I can click the in inverter on and off if I'm not using uh, that power. I like to shut this off because running the, the DC or AC inverter does take some wattage. Even when you're not powering anything, just to have the, the DC or AC inverter on, it will use some wattage of some sort to keep that in the back of your mind. So usually during the day, uh, if I'm running the water pump, which I'll show that here also, I got my switch for my pump. And here's the pump down here, which is a DC 12 volt pump. If I run this water, you can see it kicks in and you can see it's running about, topping about 89 watts. Remember, the lights are taking about 8 watts. So roughly that pump draws about 80 watts. And that's strictly what I'm using the EB3A power bank for is just DC only. Now to give you a quick lowdown, you could see my charging cable coming in here for the EB3A. I also have the charging cable here for the AC180. And we also have, which I also have a video on this, it's a gas powered, the Gemmax GM3500 IAED, which is also dual fuel. It does propane and gas. Right now I have it running on gas. This will do 2,800 running watt hours. Now this is on a 30 amp shore power hookup here, which you can see this goes to the back of my cargo trailer camper conversion. If some of you haven't seen this, I have a full playlist on how I made this cargo trailer from scratch. But that power is coming out of the gas generator. It's going into my short power hookup. And let me show you inside here quick. You can see that power coming in. It comes down on that main line. And then the back of the TV here, which is kind of a door actually, goes to my circuit breaker. So that, that power from the generator comes into my um, breaker box here. Now, if you're about to do the installation, check out my playlist area on the cargo camper conversion. I have a video on there on strictly how I did my electrical. I'm not gonna go over that right now. It'd be another half hour video. But the power comes into this breaker box and I have two circuits in here at, on 15 amp circuit breakers. One circuit goes to this outlet. This circuit goes to this outlet. Now that power comes in, goes to the circuit breaker, goes to these outlets, and that power comes out. And this is the charging cable that goes to the EB3A the, that's running all the DC. And this charging cable goes down and comes around and charges the AC 180. And this has what's called pass through on both the AC 180 and the EB3A has power pass through. What does that mean? Well, the time comes to charge these back up to full. I can run my gas, gas generator and that power will come out, go through the shore power, go up, into my circuit breaker down to these outlets that power comes out one goes to the eb3a one goes to the ac180 and not only will charge these two power banks but I'll, I'll pass that power through while it's charging which is pretty cool man this technology has really come really far and what's also cool about this gas generator that i have is it has not only dual fuel, but it has a remote to turn it on and off. And watch this. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. 
And we can be laying in bed if we need to juice our power up. We want to run the AC. You can see right now, while it's charging, I'm pulling 0.3 kilowatts, 0.4 kilowatts. Now it's kicking in the high turbo charging for the AC 180. And it's over, because it will take in 1400 watts on the AC 180 for quick charging. And it's charging both the EB3A and the AC 180. And that AC 180 has turbo charge. It will, it will charge from zero to full in an hour. A little less than an hour, actually. I think it's 45 minutes from zero to 80 in 45 minutes. But you can see here, let me zoom in. Right now, I'm, I'm almost up to 95%. So because of that, it's not drawing the full 1400. Once it starts getting close to 99, that starts to drop down. But right now, the generator is inputting 800-ish watts. If this was completely dead, it would kick into turbo mode and this would go clear up to 1400. Um, this little symbol right here, and I'll try and zoom in some more. Let me try and zoom this in. Is has a pass through button that, and you can see it's got grid power the inputs coming in and it's passing that power out and what's interesting is when this is a outlet tester it is showing that is it's grounded because it's hooked up to my generator right now test all these out and what that means is if if I got both yellow yellow that's the correct and that means it's properly grounded you can also see that I do have a ground wire they do offer a ground hookup on the side of the AC 180 and that ground wire comes up to here and goes into my breaker box and is uh, tied into my breaker box ground bar and that's properly how it's done and that that ground bar is going back down and going underneath my trailer and it is screwed to the trailer for proper ground. Now, just to show you, and it's grounded properly at my outlets. It's grounded properly at the AC 180. And if I plug it in to my generator, which is grounded, to see out in the sunlight but both of these are lit up yellow so this is grounded so right now this is charging up the AC 180 and it's also charging up my power bank so you can see the input here is 260 probably 250 watts coming in this is almost topped off at 100 and it's got UPS it's passing that power through and you can see that as this dies down, it's not requiring as much wattage and my generator RPMs just dropped. So kind of cool. This is already at 99% and you can see as, as we get closer to 99, it doesn't require as much uh, power coming in to charge this up because obviously it's at 100%. So pretty darn cool. And what we do is hold this generator shuts off and it really doesn't get any more slick than that i mean it's pretty amazing this technology that they coming out nowadays but i'm gonna drop this hydraulic bed down which we have storage underneath this like i said never mind the messiness we're cleaning our bed sheets but back here i'm going to show you all this stuff and let's start out with the coffee maker so this is hooked up to the ac now, interestingly enough, before I show you this, now that the generator's off, the generator has a proper ground on it. Now, it's not going to show a ground. It's just going to show an open circuit. You can see, if I shut this light off, just the middle one is lit up now. It doesn't show a ground because it's not getting the pass-through from the generator. Now, is that an issue because this doesn't show ground? It is not. Um, and the reason why is these power banks like this have what's called a, a neutral ground or an open ground. And 
you could see here if just the middle one is lit up it's called an open ground and that's very normal and typical for these power banks matter of fact i can even turn on the ac power on the smaller blue eddy and that also will show an open ground so that's very normal and is typical for this um so let me shut this ac off i'm just running dc on the smaller one and right now you can see 99 percent it's got no output on the ac side let's start a cup of coffee here just gotta open this up So I'll let it do its thing. Now you can see this coffee maker is using, let's zoom in on this, almost pushing 1400 watts, 1388, 1290. Right now, it's saying it will run this for 0.8 hours. Because remember, this is 1152, 89% of that's 1025 watt hours divided by that amount of wattage going out. It will power this coffee maker for 0.8 hours, which is a heck of a lot of coffee. I doubt you're gonna need that much coffee in the morning. And absolutely no issues. You can see the steam rolling off this coffee. Now this toaster requires about a little over 600 watts. Now this can only go up to 1800 watts. Now that coffee's done. This dropped down to zero on the output and the coffee's done. Pretty awesome. Uh, let's try this toaster. So right now we are at zero. So let's see. As these elements get glowing red hot, as that wattage kicks in, and this, I thought it was, sorry, I thought it was 650, it's actually 850. So you can hear as it's drawing high watt appliances like this, that this fan is kicking in. And it's actually pretty quiet. I'm pretty amazed with how quiet this is. And it's really important to keep these cool down. And I made sure nothing's blocking this it can suck in that uh, air here and blow it out the other side same thing goes for my eb3a so i got that properly vented and i don't have any toast in there but i'm just going to cancel this just to show you that i can do that um this will go back down to zero uh, let's try the air conditioner here. So the air conditioner I got in the back. So it does take a little while for the condenser to kick in. It's usually about a half a minute. Um, to show you this air conditioner unit. Right now it's just the fan. And you're gonna notice right now the fan only is drawing 63 watts. So if I run just the fan, it's will run it for 12 and a half hours. So if you want just some extra ventilation in your camper, just run the, the fan on the AC unit. You're gonna run this for 12 and a half hours. Now watch this when the condenser kicks in. Right there, it just kicked in. It, it's it peaked at about 860. Usually condensers will do that, especially on refrigerators too. And right now, it peaked at 560 for a split second and at the average running time, it will draw roughly about 370 watts and it'll run that AC unit for 2.7 hours or so. And we are at 94%. Now, watch this. I'm going to kick this generator back on and it's going to pass this power through. So let me grab my remote here. Generator starts back up. So I think we're laying in bed. Don't want to get out of bed, running out of juice. Watch this input. We'll kick in. Let's see if this, how high this goes. Input off the generator, 1200, 1300, 1400, 1500, 
1600. So not only is it powering, it'll, this will take a, a max input of 1400 watts. Not only is it taking the 1400 watts, but it's also taking the extra wattage to power the AC unit. And you can see because of that, that this is charging this power bank while it's running the AC unit. Pretty, pretty amazing. So let me shut that generator off. You can see the UPS mode kicked off, the pass through stopped, and this has what's called um, UPS, uninterruptible power supply. If you lose the power, it will switch over in milliseconds to its own power. And that it will do that not only on the AC-180, but also the EB-3A, which is absolutely amazing, the fact that it can do this. Um, and that's what we're doing. I'm using this for the AC. I'm using this for the DC. And this is never going to move, but this is portable on the other hand. And like I said, this is just running the DC. And now I bought the heaviest uh, car port cigarette lighter adapter I could find. This is a 12 gauge wire. I got this off Amazon. Matter of fact, check out the description box below. I'll have a, a link to all of these products. And the power comes in here to charge it, comes out as DC. And I have a DC fuse box back here. Matter of fact, let me turn on these lights. And that power comes in, positive, negative, to the fuse box. And then the top part here, let me just take this off here quick. Give be a better idea for those that are absolutely new to this, especially if you're doing a hookup. Is the power comes off the EB3A, negative goes here, positive goes here. And all my positive connections here with the fuses, all the negative connections down here without the fuses, and that's it. And this light goes to all of these lights, and this here goes to all of these lights here in the kitchen area. So that's how it works. As for the AC, just give you a quick lowdown on this. The power comes in, the circuit breaker goes to these two outlets. This comes out to charge the smaller EB3A for DC. This comes out and charges the larger AC 180 for the AC. And then that power comes in. The power comes out of this. Now this is the power coming out and this is the plug-in off of, this is a special surge protector. This isn't your average surge protector. Um, this has a, a built-in 15 amp breaker and it is also GFCI rated. And I can zoom in on this to show you that. So you can see it's got a GFCI rating on it. And um, the power comes off the EB3A, powers this, and then the power comes out of this. And I bought special 12 gauge heavy duty extension cords that have a rubber sheathing on it. And this is stranded. And I kept the male end that plugs into this, and one line comes off of this. It goes to the back outlet here, running the AC or whatever else we want to plug in. And this line here goes to this outlet here, which runs our kitchen area, and it's kind of shared with the bedroom area. There's also an outlet underneath here that the refrigerator is plugged into. Um, and that's how it works. And it's really simple i mean the fact that i got this for uh we'll just say 800 bucks and you can get the eb3a off of amazon with a uh, coupon code more times than not for 209 bucks and you're getting a whole lot of bang for your buck for what it can do i mean the fact that this small thing with the eb3a it's running just my dc also has ac output this has 268 watt hours this can push out 600 total uh watts on the ac um it can push out i believe what is it 13 amps on the dc it's more than enough at least for us to power our lights and the dc pump and that's all we use it for um and just to quick show you we want to keep some things portable like this eb3a let me shut off this air conditioner unit 
So. So if I want, I can unplug all of this and I design this. So I got a little tray to hold this in place, especially while we're traveling. I'm gonna shut the DC inverter off. I can take this out, say like we go out to the beach and we wanna use this out at the beach. I designed this so I can take this out. And I can also charge this with my solar panel. Now, the sun's really not out right now. Um, you know, it's pretty overcast right now. But I got this solar panel from Harbor Freight. In my opinion, it's probably the best bang for the buck. 100 watt solar panels, and it is a true 100 watt. I've actually been able to get up to 105 total watts out of this on a pure sunny day. Um, but we can actually charge this up say like we go to a state park at least in wisconsin they don't allow gas generators and we've been in that pickle before it's nice to have the ability to go to a campsite where we're parking our camper in the shade i can take this out and go to an area of the campsite that's not in the shade and let me plug this in oops right here and this is at 99%, so I don't know if it's going to take any wattage into it. Um, but like I said, it's overcast right now. Let me try it. Zoom this in, see if I can get all the better. So right now I'm taking about 31 watts, but this will easily take in 100 watts if the sun is at full bore. Right now we're at 33 but like I said, I've been able to get up to um, 105 watts off this solar panel that's rated for 100 watts. And when we're done, or if we take this to the beach, you can see my holder here. I just put a hole here so I can help push this up so I can get it out. I uh, left this open because there's actually ventilation on the side of this sucks the air out air comes out so make sure that those weren't covered up and like i said we've been in that pickle before in state parks where they don't allow cast generators and this thing has been a godsend at least to get the power for the lights and the water pump and back in action so turn the DC inverter the lights come back on and like I said AC 180 is running AC the EB3A is running DC and we can even watch some TV it's pretty awesome well hope you enjoyed this video of the new Blue Eddy AC 180 and I think we're finally done with this cargo trailer camper conversion. We got it to the point where I really can't think of anything else we need to do other than hang this curtain in front of this area. And uh, this area has actually turned out great and I'm actually happy that the screen door uh, swings in now because um, what's nice about this screen door is, let me flip you guys around in the camera. This is actually end up turning out to be something that holds back all of our gravity chairs. Our solar panel goes back here, a fold up table, collapsible trash can, our games. I put a lock on here and I can just shut that and it holds all that crap back while we're traveling. If you learned something from this video and I hope you did, a lot more videos yet to come. And like I said, check out my playlist area. I have a full extensive uh, video on there of how I built this cargo trailer camper conversion from scratch. Also check out some of my shorts. I do have a video on there on the uh, solar panel out there. And subscribe, like, and share. And I will see you guys in the next video.